is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Back there he is, the man, the myth, the legend. How are you feeling, my brother? I hope feeling good, than- oh. Huh? Yeah, I hope better than me. I am. What? I'm hurting, bro. I'm hurt. I, what uh, what, ha- what happened with you, man? Um, like once or twice a year. Um, I, I'm a weirdo. Like, so I, I have to, I, I sleep with these two, like hurricane speed fans right in my face. Right. Mm-hmm. I like to sleep in the cold. And so, but I have to cover my mouth in order to do that because, and I have to maintain it all the time because if I leave it open and the wind starts going in, boom, I get a cold no matter what it's, mm. you know, nature bee protects me from all the other bullshit outside, but <laughs> right. that one thing. <laughs> nothing can protect me from that shit dude nothing and so i slipped up and i left it open on friday night and sure enough by saturday i started feeling like shit and it's gotten it's gotten worse actually a little a little worse but it's not covid i tested myself again yesterday because okay. like it started to pick up and i go I, I told my wife you got another one of those tests she said yeah and so i used another test I've done it three days in a row so i guess i don't have it right, right. i mean I mean, if I've done it three days in a row while I'm sick, there's no way it's COVID. Okay, so, all right. So, it's not COVID, but it's a cold, and it is what it is, so it's hurting the voice now. So, I appreciate you coming on early because I need some help, bro. Hey, <laughs> hey, brother. I, I understand. I understand. And I owe you one from last Friday anyway, being on the West Coast time and being confused. So, I owe, I owe you one anyway, but... Uh, it's all good. It's all good, thank- bro. Thanks for bringing me back on. I, 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 I flew home Friday from Phoenix. We had our little athletic... Um, you know, the athletic had their college football meetings out there, which was productive. I played a little three on three basketball with a few of the guys, uh, the national guys did not represent myself well because that hundred degree Phoenix heat playing three on three basketball. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and the sun was just beating down on everybody. So uh, I didn't I didn't play very well, but I did make it back in time to uh, attend uh, uh, John Reese's uh, party, essentially the one that he had a. Uh, on the beach with over a hundred different athletes. I got to talk to a b- whole bunch of guys that are uh, under contract with him. And of course there's the big NIL story going on now, right? Where the NCAA is trying to uh, work their way back in and uh, create some rules in place to try to curtail boosters, um, you know, enticing kids to come to schools with money. And uh, I don't know that you ever put the genie back in the bottle at this point, bro. Not after this oh, no. court decision and everything else. So, uh, whatever the NCAA does, I think they're in for uh, they're in for some fights, some legal fights with some of these sure. uh, organizations. For sure, it's the same. It's the same. No matter what's going on right now, what anybody tells you or me or whatever, it's the same thing with crypto. Toothpaste mm-hmm. is out of the tube. Banking yeah. is not ever going to be the same again. Decentralized banking is going to crush banking all over the world, and that's why governments are terrified of this because it actually gives the people power. And uh, so eventually you can't stop something like this. And I think that's the same thing here. You've been abusing these kids for many, many years. And I remember, listen, I've been at it so long now, 32 years. I was an idiot 20 years ago Mm -hmm. because 20 years ago, I was the moron that would make the argument. Well, they're, they're getting an education. They're giving them a scholarship and they can study and set themselves up. But you know, you, that naivete doesn't carry you very far when you really look at these kids, and most of them aren't going for an education. They're going no. because they think they're going to the NFL or the NBA or whatever the hell it is, and they're using you for that step forward. They don't give a crap about the education. And so I don't have a problem with them making money. I don't have a problem with them switching schools. Uh, we've watched colleges abuse. We've watched coaches abuse the situations because when it gets ugly, they can pick up and move and go to the next school and leave the mess behind them, you know, a la Mm -hmm. LeBron style. Yeah. Yeah. And I I think, um, you know, I I had a long conversation with uh, Jake Garcia's father on on Friday. And you're talking Mm -hmm. about a guy who was a police officer for a long time. And uh, I asked him because, you know, Jake's deals are, I think, 60 and 80,000 for the next two years with, with, uh, with Rees and Life Wallet, and uh, I asked him. I said, "So, how long did it take you in your career to get the sixty thousand dollars as a police officer?" You know. Oh God. <laughs> and he he says, "Listen, man. He's like, I, he's like, that's the whole thing." He says, "I think these kids, 
in a way they're being taught lessons that that uh in terms of how to handle money responsibility etc that's part of what they're they're learning uh with with these deals paying taxes everything else that, that goes into this and uh he said quite frankly he probably wouldn't be living here if it wasn't for some of this nil money that helps that helps the whole whole cause with jake you know being able to help him pay all the bills he needs to pay and then them living here they moved they moved with jake from california and georgia over here so um well that's a that that's a blessing in itself what the hell why, yeah. why would you want to live in california right now that no of course not absolute disaster so but th that in itself was a blessing for them yeah well and and but the, but people think oh, okay well where does all this money go they're all buying million dollar cars I'm telling you, man, even the car deals that some of these guys have, yes, they're driving Dodge Chargers. Yes, maybe they're driving Beamers, but it's not like they're all running around in Lamborghinis and Ferraris, bro. Like this this whole concept of, mm -hmm. of where this money goes and how it's used. A lot of the kids that I've talked to, uh, you know, they're just giving the money to their parents. They don't have their parents don't have much money at all. So they're just sort of handing it over. Hey, here, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make it to the NFL. That's what my goal is. Here's the money to help pay the bills for, for the house this week or whatever. And uh so the money is being put to good use, I think, in a lot of these instances. Um, and I know ultimately the NCAA, NCAA doesn't care about that. This is all a power grab, right? Everybody wants to um, control the situation. Uh, and now Miami's got a big billionaire who is is helping a lot of their student athletes out and attracting people to come down here. And, uh, well, that's that's why the rules are changing, right? That's why uh, all these... Uh, all these things are being done. But uh, Ruiz told me on Friday he's ready for a fight. They said, come come and tap him on the shoulder. He's ready to prove himself. So from a Miami perspective, I know these NIL rules are out there and people are talking about what's going to happen, what are they going to do. I really think Miami's in a pretty good situation compared to schools that have collectives, which is you know the way that the, they're utilizing the money and the way that they're paying kids and the, and the contracts that they're signing. Those are more problematic than the ones that Ruiz is signing, which is specific to advertising and marketing for his businesses yeah and, and listen you would hope ruiz being a lawyer mm -hmm. that he is kind of you know dotting all the i's and crossing oh yeah and and making sure that he can like okay and he's got all the proof and everything there he so does that way he, yeah exactly and if he's able to because you know it's it's kind of the whole thing of you worry about who's giving who money because if it's just a booster that's going going out there and buying some kid again he may not know all the rules he may not know all the laws and then he may end up breaking them whereas a guy that you would ex you expect that is a lawyer would actually know all the the laws and the loopholes mm -hmm. of course so you can take advantage of them absolutely and i think he uh i think he's you know he's got a whole legal team that checks everything and from from the university of miami end i've asked i said how's he doing Basically, uh, everything is goes through their compliance office and immediately goes to the NCAA and they immediately check it. So it's not like um, they don't have a system in place where they're sort of there's some safeguards for all this. Now, the issue is going to be enticement, right? It's it's when does he have these conversations with these potential recruits? Uh, the rule states essentially that, you know, boosters aren't allowed to uh, be involved in the recruiting process. So, um you know, he's told me in the past he's had conversations with with uh, recruits, people who uh, who have reached out to him and ask him questions about NIL and so forth, parents, et cetera, people around the players. Will that get Miami in trouble? We'll see. Um, you know, it depends on what the NCAA can prove ultimately. And ultimately, they're, they're depending on the parents and the kids who are getting paid to uh, turn these guys in if they're if they're sort of crossing that threshold. Um, and don't forget, folks, if you order at caneswear.com, you order over $99, you will get free shipping. 2511 South University Drive in Davie. Go to caneswear.com and go check it out, whether it's Dolphins, Marlins, Panthers, Heat, Inter-Miami gear, and, of course, anything and everything with the UM logo, you can go to caneswear.com and check it out. Go see Brett and all the great people out there. They will definitely take care of you. We'll be out there broadcasting live next Saturday. Not this Saturday, but next Saturday we'll be broadcasting live over at Kane's Wear. Um, all right, so recruiting-wise, we had the, uh, the the spring game, right? And obviously some uh, changes probably are going to be made and players that he was unhappy with and maybe got a tap on the shoulder like, yo, you're not going to get a lot of playing time. So uh, what are we hearing? Any any new names coming out of the transfer portal and we are coming up to the deadline, correct? 
Uh, yes. Uh, well, the deadline already passed. That was May 1st. Oh. So, oh, in May order 1st. to, okay. so yeah, that's in order, it. We're done? if you're an underclassman and you, and you, uh, haven't graduated yet and you want to do a transfer, you had to have been in by May 1 to be football eligible for this fall. Okay. So now it's just seniors. Is that what you're saying? Now, you're, now, you're now saying? I think, now I think grad transfers can still, um, if they if they choose to leave right. after the fact, if you're a grad transfer, that's a different rule. This was the one time transfer rule, essentially for underclassmen. If you if you haven't graduated yet, you can always transfer as a grad transfer. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, yeah, they're they're in on a couple different kids. One of them uh, is Jalen Jalen Robinson, UCF wide receiver, former UCF wide receiver, kid from Oklahoma. Who initially I was told he would he would probably be going home to play for SMU. Now he's visited a bunch of universities. He's going to be coming to visit Miami as well. Um, I spoke to an intermediary uh, regarding Jalen to ask what's his deal. Um, and what I was told was he's all over the place. So who knows what this kid's going to end up doing. I think he's going to have an announcement on May 18th. Um, but he's a former uh, teenager. Started, yeah, 20, 21 years old kid, you know. Who, oh, he's 20. Who, okay. Well, and this good. is going to. And this is going to be, um, I think, his second transfer because he was originally at uh, Oklahoma or had signed with Oklahoma and then ended up at UCF. So, um, so this you know, this guy's from the Stephen Blake School of Transferring. I got you. I, I, I believe so. Yeah. So, but originally I was told uh, that the most likely scenario would be he'd be going home to Texas. You know, another uh, Texas Dallas guy, uh, just like Charleston Rambo. Um, you know, he was productive last year. Didn't have a great year. I kind of look at him as you know, an average guy who could come in and be a rotational piece. The one that Miami obviously wants is Jordan Addison. And that's the Belitnikoff award winner from Pitt who entered the portal. I've been told, uh, you know, a couple different, by a couple different people that he's just not sort of returning uh, any interest for what Miami, you know, wants and, and hoping to get him here. So I think uh, we'll see what happens with Jordan Addison. That's a big national story. Um, but I, at this point, I don't think Miami's really in the race for him. Um, and then there's also one more guy, another offensive lineman that they're looking at. You know, Mario, he can't help himself. Uh, the kid out of Charlotte, I, don't, I forgot what his name is, but he, he was a 24-game starter there at Charlotte, UNC Charlotte. Um, another guy to sort of put in the rotation uh, at guard and tackle. He's Mario's just looking for the best offensive line he can put together, and as many guys as he puts there, part of it is to build up. Part of it is to uh, – You ain't getting anywhere without an O-line, bro. I don't no. give a shit. I ain't getting no. anywhere. So you know? uh, that's it's not just the Tua thing, by the way. That's uh, no. an everybody thing. But go ahead. Yeah. So uh, those are the transfer portal type guys that could potentially be added here. I think Miami's at eighty three. When I did my math, I think they're at eighty three scholarships. They got two two left. And essentially, another thing the NCAA is pitching is uh, just make it eighty five. Right. You, you can sign as many as you want each year, just as long as you're under eighty five. That's in the process of being ironed out here as well. So uh, I, don't, I don't think you have to worry anymore about the uh, initial scholarships. You're only allowed 25 before. And then with the transfer portal, they said if seven guys leave, you can sign up to seven more. Now it's kind of like, OK, no, there's too many teams that are under the 85 scholarship limit. We need to get back to some normalcy. So that's that's the initiative being pushed there. So I think in terms of uh, scholarships, you can probably get two more guys for this roster for this coming season. And then after that, we'll figure it out. By the way, when when uh, let's let's just wrap it up with this. Can we just call the transfer portal the the Stephen Blake uh, transfer? We can rules? rename it. We can rename I it mean, if you listen, want. Yeah. Listen, if we think about this, this kid was in high school, yeah, and he was ahead of the curve on everybody <laughs> because he's playing at Killian, and all of a sudden Schaefer thinks he's got him, right? And he says, "Nah, I'm going to go to Miami Lakes." Yeah, and you know, obviously Miami Lakes became a monster, and then he said, "Yeah." I'm going to go to Miami High. And then Miami High became a monster. And then Miami High got in trouble and he left. And he goes, I'm going to go to Oak Hill Academy. You know what I mean? He was ahead of his time transferring in high school. Yeah. From one high school to another. It's got to be the Stephen Blake transfer portal is what it, it has to be. I we, mean, we're going to make we're gonna make that push. He, we're going to make that he push. He had, had the... He had the uh, what's that called? The foresight, my man. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, I, listen, I don't think my, a lot of people know about that. That they don't they really not, realize no. about Stephen Blake how he like manipulated that whole thing. And God bless him, bro. 
<laughs> no, he was one God of the bless. first ones. He was the Kurt. He was the Kurt Flood of the transfer portal. Is what he was. Yeah. right. A, that's what he was. Nobody has any idea who Kurt Flood is, by the way. When, right. When no, that's true. That too. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're just two old guys talking sports here. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I listen. Uh, kudos to the guys who can who can work the system to their advantage. Right. I mean, uh, he was the first player to really do that, and uh, now we got boosters that are doing that in the new NIL world. So it's uh been interesting to watch unfold i think uh you know i'm hopefully to get mario here on the phone the next week or so i gotta write a couple stories uh for the athletic but uh i think for the most part he's satisfied with the roster reconstruction that he's done here think about where miami was how many recruits he added how many transfers he's added um you know i think from a a mission standpoint of can we meet all of our needs i think uh i think they've, they're very close they're very close to where they want to be all right, what are you working on in the athletics so uh, our folks can check you out, my friend? Yeah, uh, well, I had that interview with Malik Rozier, uh, the former Canes quarterback, uh, last week that I promised I would get online. So I'm working on a story on that, uh, and and the podcast will be up as well. Uh, I'll be sharing some more notes from uh, from my uh, conversations last Friday with a couple of different guys. I met a bunch of the new the new transfers, the kids from UCLA, Caleb Johnson, um, Agude. Mitch Lagude, uh, all the all the guys that are uh, uh, the new additions to the roster. I talked to a whole bunch of those guys. So there'll be a whole bunch of content on that. And then uh, state of the program, we have a, our, our series every year. That if you want to go in-depth on every team in college football, we've got our best writers writing these 3,000-word pieces on uh, – so I'll be doing Miami and UCF, and uh, that'll be that'll be in the works. And, I, and I'll probably take a little vacation, man, because this is the time of year to do it before things get really, really crazy. That's right. You better do it. And mm -hmm. – uh, there you go. So we'll be the only ones bothering you during your vacation. You That's, That's it's all good. I always like talking to you guys. You, the, talking to you is like being on vacation, just shooting the the uh, S H I T. You know. I see. I, that's what we try <laughs> to do every day here with all with all our folks. It's just kind of, you know, just a relaxing shooting the crap conversation. So it is yep, what it exactly. is. Yep. Exactly. Oh, yep. Excuse me. Follow him on Twitter and Manny underscore Navarro. Catch his work at the Athletic and make sure you subscribe, Manny. I appreciate you. Thank you, my friend. Feel better, my friend. See ya. You got it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh